My oh my, it's another villain video. I've talked about One Piece villains previously with my Doflamingo video and boy was that one gobbled up. I appreciate that and I'm glad you're all eating good. Although using the term villain is a bit imprecise for One Piece since these guys are more antagonists than anything. I don't know, when I think villain I think of a guy twirling his moustache in a shiny swivel chair. Although it's no doubt earlier One Piece antagonists were this cheesy since, as I've said before, a lot of early antagonists lacked a motivation or backstory for why they were doing the things they were doing. Yeah. <laughs> Banana. It's not like they really needed backstories, they simply had a zest that was loved among fans, even though we're all oogling crocodile for what his life story could possibly be. I'm watching you, you little sandy ass bitch. Every single arc needs the big bad for Luffy to beat, and usually big bad beat means arc end and everyone happy. As the old saying goes, just fucking punch the shit out of your problems. But there's one or two arcs that don't really do that, and the one I want to focus on today is Whole Cake Island. Specifically, I want to look at the monster munchy mochi man. Katakuri. But before we can get into any of that, we have our first sponsor. Wahoo! <laughs> While we cannot all be pirates in our current day and age, we can still be pirates online. And we can do that safely with Atlas VPN. If you're not a tech nerd like me and have no idea what a VPN is, a VPN makes it so all your internet searches, browsing, and history is completely protected. It's sure to hide your IP address and it keeps you safe from spying, especially from the pesky FBI agent in your computer who's watching you look up Zoro's big fat boobies as we speak. But Atlas VPN isn't just a VPN, it also protects you from pop-up ads and malicious malware. It can also give you access to any country's version of Netflix or Disney+. Plus. I mentioned Disney+, Plus specifically because did you guys know that the entirety of Bleach is on Australian Disney+, Plus? and with Atlas you, yes you, can get the best VPN deal on the market. You can get a full subscription for $1.70 a month with 6 months extra, and a 30 day money back guarantee. Even better than that, if you use my link in the description below, you get an 82% discount for premium subscription. Snatch that deal while it's hot. And thank you so much Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. I won't let you down. If you know me, you know I have, um... <coughs> I just tingled a little bit. Good lord! Feelings for Katakuri. And I'll tell you what, Oda truly delivers on his antagonists. Sometimes they're sexy, sometimes they're not. But when they're sexy, by god are they sexy. And I will do my best to not salivate this entire video over this delicious beast of a man because, as always, there is a lot more to him than meets the surface. Spoilers, it's not just his awesome cowboy boots, gotta love that these match literally nothing else on his outfit. Also, why does he have so many belts, how long does it take him to dress every morning? Katakuri is up there as one of the most loved antagonists in One Piece, and I'm pretty sure I know why. He's got me tied around his finger, that's for sure. But it surely cannot just be due to his huge mochi tits. Well, for me it isn't, although that does play a huge factor, I am not gonna lie. Katakuri is an interesting One Piece antagonist because by all means he isn't the main antagonist of Whole Cake Island, yet he's still the one Luffy fights. The main antagonist is definitely Big Mom, she's the one they have to take out and she's the one that even gets her full-fledged backstory. But Luffy doesn't fight her, instead they run away from her and after a few wedding shenanigans he's face to face with Katakuri. Katakuri's whole deal is honestly really funny because he's presented to us as the extreme alpha chad. Not only is he Big Mom's second son, but he's apparently never been seen lying down on his back. Everything about him just screams cool, mature, and dangerous. That Sigma male grind never stops, baby. But even with this threatening aura Katakuri gives off, he's still overshadowed by his mother. Katakuri is interesting because he's not the one to beat to complete the arc. He's just someone standing in the way of the actual problem, which is, of course, Big Mom. And by all means, there's no real reason for Luffy to fight Katakuri apart from the fact Katakuri is so insanely strong and imposes a threat to Sanji and his crew. But unlike Crocodile, Enel, Kind of Luchi, Doflamingo and the rest, he isn't the problem. Immediately this gives Katakuri an appeal the other antagonists don't have. This appeal being, he is simply a victim of circumstance. And the circumstance is the fact he's Big Mom's son. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we've seen Luffy all out brawl with someone who isn't the main source of the problem before. But Luffy's been left with no choice due to Katakuri standing in his way of getting to the actual issue. He kind of did this with Bellamy, but Bellamy wasn't a main arc fight the way Katakuri was. This is why, through
throughout the entire fight, there is an extreme underline of respect between these two. A respect Luffy has never expressed towards an antagonist until Katakuri, and one an antagonist has never given back to Luffy. There are antagonists who hold Luffy in high regard, but with Katakuri there was a wholesomeness to it, and by the end it felt like both of them weren't fighting each other just for being on different sides. And I'm sure in another life or upon different circumstances, Luffy and Katakuri would have been the best of friends. So, you know what we gotta do now? We gotta dig into Katakuri's big mochi brain and figure out how he works. Amazing design aside, no. Katakuri is also amazingly written and, in my opinion, one of the best antagonists One Piece has ever conceived. He's no Doflamingo, but he has a different flavour to him. A sweet, chewy, delicious flavour no other antagonist can compare to. Yes, he is extremely strong with his future sight hockey and his devil fruit and blah blah blah, but what makes him so good as a character is how he ties into the theme of Whole Cake Island with Sanji. It almost feels like Katakuri and Sanji are two sides of the same coin. In fact, Brulee, Pudding, and maybe Peros Peros, but I don't care about him so I hope he dies. They all mirror Sanji and complement his struggles with the main theme of Whole Cake Island, with this theme being blood family. More specifically, the complications of blood family relationships and duty to family due to being bound by blood. Katakuri is threatening, there's no doubt about that. But he isn't evil. He's no big mum, he's simply her second son. In the same way Sanji is the son of Judge, who is a master of science and the evolution of war machinery, Katakuri was the son of a pirate emperor. Already, we can see the circumstance he's been forced into simply by being born. Because how the fuck do you go against a woman who is not only your mother, but an emperor of the sea? He had no choice but to become strong, to work under his mother and to be her man in the front lines with anything she needed. There's a complete obligation to family for him, but it can be argued whether he does this willingly. Unlike Sanji, who rejected his father and escaped his clutches, Katakuri had no option to ever even dream of such a thing. So, with absolutely no way of controlling his own fate, he had to accept his position as the second son and become the strongest soldier on her crew. At least, this could be one of the reasons. And let me build up to that. Katakuri from the beginning has been shown as the perfect man. We see Katakuri as nothing but serious, calm, cool, and composed. This ties into his Haki ability, with him needing to be calm and focused to use it, but there's a lot more to it than that. It's honestly amazing how Oda ties in characters' abilities to their entire writing overall. When Luffy faces Katakuri, Brule tells us who Katakuri is. She calls him a superhuman who never lies on his back, even says he was apparently born standing this man really just walked out of the womb. The most interesting part with all this is Katakuri doesn't accept that praise, and he even tells Brulee to stop. We can already see this alpha chadness Brulee is talking about isn't exactly true, and this is due to how he speaks to Luffy after Pedro's death. When he's fighting with Luffy on the Sunny, Katakuri says, I hope you're strong enough to kick me out. Now, why would the Alpha Chad man, who is apparently nothing but powerful and brutal, want Luffy to be able to throw him out? We're already getting an insight of the softness of his character, and to me, this reads as Katakuri not wanting someone's death to be in vain. He's simply doing his duty as a general at this point, and all he can do is hope Luffy is strong enough to protect his own crew. One Piece does this fantastic thing where the fights progress story and character, but not just in the way of defeating the final boss, but in the way of gaining better insight of character throughout the fights. As always, if you pay more attention to the words than the fight itself between Katakuri and Luffy, you'll start to peel back each layer of Katakuri's character and soul. From the get-go, what we're told about Katakuri is completely unrealistic. A man who stood the second he was born. A man who's never lied on his back who never let his guard down. It's true a character like that could exist in One Piece with how ridiculous it is, but Katakuri not accepting that praise tells us enough. He's putting on a front, and these expectations are who he's pretending to be. There's an insane pressure put on Katakuri to be the perfect man, to be the strong big brother, and he's stuck in this prison of unrealistic expectation that he can't break out of. It's even possible Katakuri wanted to meet someone as strong as Luffy, someone who could finally shatter his top fake layer to free him from the pressures of perfection. But I digress. Whether he wanted Luffy to beat him or not is up to interpretation, but the respect he shows Luffy is certainly very 
very evident. In fact, there's a moment where Katakuri completely acknowledges Luffy when explaining he isn't underestimating him, and even admits Luffy is stressing him out due to how he's dodging his attacks. Now, imagine you're a Chad Alpha who's never made a mistake in their life, but I'm sure you don't have to pretend, you big man you. Now imagine, for the first time, someone is actually showing a greater potential than anyone you've met before. This position you've upheld all your life, this position being the big Chad Alpha, will no doubt, waver. And this is exactly why Luffy gets to Katakuri, and why Katakuri is starting to stress out. Due to this, Katakuri uses all his might to take out Luffy, and we receive yet more insight on just the type of person Katakuri really is. His chefs come in at his designated tea time to offer him his snack, which are his beloved donuts, and they continue to hammer in the pressure Katakuri faces. Katakuri makes a mini mochi temple for himself, to which he enters with his snacks, and we get an explanation from the chefs about why he's done this. They say no one has ever seen Katakuri eat, and this is due to the fact he never relaxes, not even while he's eating. They further say he's apparently using this time to hone and sharpen his power, and there's an immense concentration happening within this forbidden temple. That is, until Luffy comes back to destroy it. Not only does Luffy shatter the Mochi temple, but he shatters the pretense Katakuri puts up. And what do we see in the temple? We see Katakuri laying on his back, indulging himself on donuts and singing about how much he loves them. Oh, donuts. Umas, donuts. Everything the chef said was a total lie, and it shocked even them. Turns out, Katakuri does relax, he just never allows anyone to see it. He even calls this time a forbidden pleasure, which is really sad to me. His act of being perfect has gotten to the point that just relaxing, just being a normal human being, cannot be shown to anyone and is believed to be a forbidden pleasure. And this is where the layers of Katakuri continue to peel, and they peel back rapidly. We have now seen Katakuri does indeed relax, he does lie on his back, and he's forcing himself to keep up such a facade. Not only this, we discover he's extremely self-conscious of his mouth. He charges forward to chase the chefs, completely shaken and enraged at what they'd seen. And he becomes angrier when he thinks one of them was making fun of his mouth. For the first time ever, he's become irrational, and he calls this his true self. And once again, it's just sad. How upsetting that he believes his true self to be something to hide. And that even he doesn't see himself as the perfect big brother he's pretended to be nearly his entire life. At this point, my heart really went out to Katakuri. Yes, he got aggressive and he became unstable for a moment, but it's obvious there's something much deeper here. He's obviously not malicious, and he clearly has self-image issues, to the point not even Luffy said anything. Luffy tends to point out anything on a person he thinks is weird or funny, such as Pika's voice or Buggy's nose, but he did nothing of the sort with Katakuri. This is because, above everything else, Luffy is insanely good at reading people, and his respect for Katakuri has him understand Standing. We finally get to the meat and potatoes of Katakuri's character when one of his sisters, Flampe, tries to help him with his fight. Flampe shoots Luffy with a numbing dart, rendering Luffy weaker, and Katakuri discovers Flampe's interference. Flampe believes this will gain her points with Katakuri, since she wants to be the favourite little sister. And who knows, had this not been Luffy, maybe Katakuri would have thanked her for it. But because Katakuri holds Luffy so highly, and because he's never met someone as strong as Luffy, he absolutely rages. He takes it as far as stabbing himself in the stomach, making sure he's on even ground with Luffy, and Flampe is shocked. At this point, Katakuri's perfect big brother facade is finally fully crumbling, and he rips off his scarf to reveal his deformed mouth. For the first time, Flampe sees him irrational, angry, and has shown Katakuri's true self. And the saddest part? Flampe rejects it. The perfect big brother she loved so much, who she wanted to be favoured by, now no longer exists to her. Her opinion of him immediately lowers, and she calls him disappointing, pathetic, a loser, and lame. She then rubs salt into the wound by saying the siblings all only admire a certain Katakuri, and even says he isn't the big brother Katakuri she knows and loves. Even though this is his true self! Flampe yells that the perfect big brother they all know and love is dead, and in an absolute power power move, Katakuri doesn't retaliate at all, and steps on the scarf he normally wears to walk towards Luffy. <laughs> 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 
At this moment, Katakuri throws away his fake self. After years and years of pretending to be perfect, of lying to himself and projecting something he wasn't, he's finally throwing it away. The step on the scarf symbolizes this completely, having used it to hide who he really was since he was a child, and this is all because of Luffy. As horrible as it must be to find someone as strong as, or stronger than you, for Katakuri this must also come as a relief. There's a pressure removed from him with meeting an equal, especially seeing Luffy is by no means perfect himself. And he can bring out his true self to fight Luffy. Dude, isn't that just so beautiful? Like, I'm really tearing up here. Katakuri even acknowledges he's no longer fighting Luffy just because he's a general. He leaves the line open-ended. So it's up to anyone for what he's really fighting for here. And I honestly believe he continues to fight Luffy because he's excited about Luffy's strength and potential. He's met someone who can match up to him and has forced forcefully peeled all of Katakuri's fake layers back to reveal who he really is. He's not fighting Luffy under obligation anymore, but purely because he wants to, and there is absolutely no malice behind it, which makes this entire battle all the more enjoyable to watch. Overall, I think he really wants to see if Luffy can take him down, and if he can finally stop being perfect if that happens. There's also a really funny line here where it sounds like Katakuri's yelling wanker in English. WANKER! This fight ends on such a satisfying note. Throughout the entire thing, we've watched Katakuri crumble, change, and develop. It was more than just a clash of fists, so it needed to end with something cathartic. And oh boy, did it do just that. Together, Luffy and Katakuri fall. Katakuri noticeably falling face down. Luffy manages to stand back up, realizing he's won the fight, but in front of him, Katakuri also still stands. At this point, Katakuri asks something extremely bittersweet. He asks, will you come back to defeat Big Mom? And Luffy, with all his chest, answers, of course, because he'll become the King of the Pirates. Katakuri accepts it, and with complete faith in Luffy, finally falls onto his back in front of his opponent. It felt there was an almost hopeful tone with his question, perhaps he does desperately want someone to defeat Big Mom. Whether it's due to what he's gone through while being her son, or the pressure of what it means to be a general on her crew, that's up to you. But like many others in this series, Katakuri believes in Luffy's dream, and watching Katakuri fall back to the ground was honestly tear-jerking. With a final sign of respect, Luffy covers Katakuri's mouth with his dress hat, as he knows how self-conscious Katakuri is about it, and leaves Katakuri's integrity intact before walking away. It's a beautiful moment, but it also kind of made me laugh because of course the hat had to be a goddamn fedora. My lady? When Hawkeye Island finally meets its final act, we go back to Katakuri and Brulee in the mirror world, and we get the final piece of the Katakuri puzzle. We find out this entire act was for his siblings, discovering Brulee has been harassed and harmed due to Katakuri existing as who he was. He held a belief that he had to hide who he was to keep his siblings safe, and that's ultimately where his strength comes from. But on top of all of this, the idea that he needs to be strong due to Big Mom being his mother is mixed in as well, as he consistently asked Luffy if he thought he could beat Big Mom if he couldn't even beat him. Still, it's pretty clear Katakuri's perfect big brother facade comes from his love for his siblings, which is why it's so tragic when Flampe rejects him. Imagine thinking who you really are damages those around you, and in order to keep everyone safe, you need to become something you're not. It's an awful prison Katakuri had put himself in, and even with the rejection he experienced from Flampe, we at least have Brulee there to reassure him. She had always known who her brother really was, and had always believed his best self was perfect. Even after this, if Katakuri must keep up his perfect big brother act, at least he finally has someone he can shamelessly be himself around. So, after all this, what's the appeal of Katakuri? He's strong, and there's no doubt, but his main appeal, at least for me, is the struggle of self he faces. Katakuri tried his hardest to be perfect, and in the eyes of others, he succeeded at it for decades. He was afraid to be himself, afraid of how others would see him, and kept up an act for the protection of his siblings. I'm sure anyone who is an older sibling can relate to him very heavily, but I think it can be relatable for anyone to be scared of showing your true self. Katakuri faces both rejection and acceptance from others when revealing 
revealing who he truly is. And that's just realistic. We all put on a mask for others depending on the person and taking that mask off will be met with ridicule. But sometimes, and hopefully a lot of the time, it'll be embraced by those around you. And sometimes, you'll meet someone who'll pull your real self out for you, which is exactly what Luffy did for Katakuri. There's a liberation that Luffy has given Katakuri with his defeat, and I really do want Katakuri to come back into the canon story to see if anything's different in how he behaves. I can only hope that Katakuri has started to accept that he doesn't need to be perfect and he's allowed to show off those big fat chompers of his. The other appeal of Katakuri is the reverse moe. I don't care what anyone says, this man is insanely cute and the fact that he hides that is a tragedy. Katakuri, if you can hear me, I love you and I miss your big mochi boobs. And with that, Thanks for watching. I was requested to talk about Katakuri, but he's always been one of my favorites, and I would have made a video on him even if no one asked. He's just a big sweet guy, and he's definitely one of the reasons Whole Cake Island was as good as it was. If you'd like me to talk about anything else, One Piece or otherwise, please let me know, and I'll see you in whatever I make next. See ya!